Lisa with Luna Moth Creations and I am back with my Tamed Wild for August? Or no, August. What? That's not right. <laughs> uh, December. I think this is December 2021. Forgive me, y'all. Um, I don't know what time it is. 10.30 at night, which is not late for me, especially since I work night shift, but apparently I'm... I'm having a hard time over here. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. So guys, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Lisa and on my channel I like to do witchy subscription unboxings as well as one fabulous self-care subscription box tarot and oracle deck unboxings and reviews. And like I said, we're doing our team of wild. So this is a extremely affordable box. I feel like it's like 20 bucks a month or something or maybe cheaper than that. Ugh. Let's get it open. Okay. And see what we got. Oh, tea leaf reading. So right on top, I've got some cards and it says tea leaf reading. And on the back, it says tea leaf reading is a form of divination, which y'all, if you follow me, you know I like divination because I'm a tarot reader. Um, the diviner or diviner, 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 the diviner. Hmm. Okay. The diviner must interpret patterns of tea leaves left behind in a teacup or vessel. The art of identifying symbols through tea leaves is called tessiomance. That ain't right. Tessiography. Tessiography. Tessiomancy? I mean, you know, omancy is usually on the end of things like that, but we're going to go with tessio... Tessiography. Tess... All right, let's start over. While the practice is simple it, it, in itself, interpretation and intuition can be developed and sharpened to better understand the messages. If possible, use a light colored, tea, uh, excuse me, light colored cup in order to see the messages more clearly. To read tea leaves, first place a pinch of loose, I can't even fucking speak today, loose leaf tea, I never can, into a cup, it's because my brain and my mouth don't work together very well because I'm super ADHD. All right, loose leaf tea into a cup, pouring hot water over the leaves. No strainer is needed for this practice. As you sip your tea as usual, become more grounded and set your intentions for the reading. Ask a question of the leaves. Be as concise, clear, and specific as possible. If it helps, you may write out your question beforehand or even speak it aloud. When there is a small amount of liquid remaining, move the cup in a clockwise circle three times with your left hand and turn the cups upside down, allowing the liquid to drain. Return the cup to face upward and read the leaves, placing the handle towards the south. To interpret the leaves, pay attention to where the leaves fall on the surface of the cup, the symbols that are presented, and also the size of the symbols. All of these elements will play a role in what the messages are. There are classic resources that can help you piece together the story of your reading. But you can also pay attention to what comes up for you from your own stories and symbolic associations. You may see letters, numbers, animals, objects, or other potent symbols. Um, I actually did a, um, a project with some tea leaf reading stuff that I ended up giving to my new coven that I'm in. I'm in a new coven. Um, it's a small group of us and I love it. I love my peeps. Shout out to my girls and my guy that are in my coven. Anyways, all right. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. We're moving right along. <laughs> Tea leaves in the new year. Let's, let's actually wait because this is probably going to tell me some things that are in the box. So first off, woo! We got some honey sticks, fun, fun, fun. And then we have maybe, um, is this rosemary? We've got a smoke um, bundle. I wonder if it tells me. Okay, so we've got honey sticks. Let's start from this. Honey reminds us of the sweetness of life. To call in a bit of sweetness, add honey to a cup of tea while meditating on intentions of joy and bliss. You can add honey to like any type of spell. Honey is used a lot. I mean, 
I like to use it to sweeten the situation, you know, or I'll use sugar. But anyways, because um, I had like a conflict and when you want to um, diffuse that, you can put some honey or some sugar to make it sweet. All right. And then we have, oh, it's blue sage smoke cleansing. Native, something smells good. Mm. Uh, native to the southwestern United States, blue sage is marked by the vibrant blue flowers that bloom right after it rains. Known as the godmother plant for its spiritual and healing uses, blue sage has a light hmm, floral scent that helps to balance and cleanse a space, especially during, excuse me, especially before ritual. That is nice. I don't have blue sage in my witchy shop, but I do have white sage. So if you guys are interested, Link below to my witchy store. I do have white sage that I've got in my herb jars. So, if you're interested, we got all kinds of tea shit in here. Okay. Um, I have a little sachet. Okay, it's almost like there's nothing in it, but there is something in it. Ooh, something went up my nose. Aw. So, is it a... It's a raven. So, we have a little... Okay, let me take it out of here. It's a little raven, and it says Amulet Raven for Odin. So, if you guys didn't know this, since we're, this is Yule, Odin was actually the original Santa Claus. And Odin um, is associated with runes, actually. Um, he, like... I forget what the what the mythology is. He like sold his soul or some shit. I might be making that up to learn the secret of the runes. <clears throat> okay. Can you guys see it? There we go. It's a little raven. Oh, I guess I put too much blue sage up my nose. Odin and the raven have long been symbolically intertwined. Perched upon his shoulders, his ravens are a source of knowledge, and even as an extension of the god himself, bringing him news from their flights above the earth. Uh, I'm going to say this wrong. Hugin, Hugin, and Munin, I probably said that wrong, are the names of Odin's sacred ravens, and their names translate to thought and memory. Fucking love that. The raven is connected with war, much like Odin is, but also is considered a symbol of intellectual prowess. Very nice. Um, my boyfriend has a beautiful uh, painting of a raven's eye that he did a frame, and then inside the eye you see like a bunch of other ravens like flying. It's really cool. He's got that hanging up in the movie theater at his house because they have a movie theater. And then I have a beautiful. Oh! Oh! Oh, I thought this was one thing, but then I feel, I, I figured out it was something else. Okay, it is a clear quartz crystal on the end of a tea ball. Ooh, nice. So there's my, I thought it was just picking up a piece of clear quartz, but it's actually a tea ball infuser. Oh my gosh. Okay, where did it go? I saw it. Crystal, crystal tea strainer with rough clear quartz. Rough Clear Quartz is known as the Witch's Mirror. This stone is said to be a master healer. It's known to remove toxins, boost the immune system, and relieve head pain. It is also used to balance emotions and boost creativity. When carried and used in ritual... Oh my god, I'm so sorry guys. I always have the burps with you guys because I drink... <laughs> I'm drinking my monster. Mm. When carried and used in ritual, it is believed to be a protective, clairvoyant, and purifying stone. Use the strainer with any loose tea, like our cold and flu brew. I guess they just told us something. To create a soothing and center cup to aid in healing and daily ritual. Very nice. Okay, so we got that, got that. And then we just have um, some loose leaf tea bags. And I think it's... Just says every tea lover should keep individual tea bags on hand. These bags are the definition of practical magic and can be used to brew a soothing and intentionally crafted cup of tea. All right. So I've got two more things in here. And I've got like what they told us, the cold and flu artisan herbal tea. There's that. You can see the 
tea in there. Oh, this is going to be good. All right, it says perfect for those times when you have a trickle, excuse me, a tickle, a trickle? A tickle in the back of your throat. This cold and flu tea helps open up your airway with the refreshing flavors of mint and lemon balm while soothing your throat with um, calendula and thyme. Its loose leaves are perfect for tessiography or tea leaf reading. I thought it said, okay, so it actually says contains peppermint, elderflower, rose hips, ginger, anise, seed, thyme, yarrow, and calendula. Healing yourself is connected with healing others. That was a quote by Yoko Ono. There you go. Oh, I was going to say something mean. I was like, <laughs> I was going to be like, you didn't heal John Lennon, Yoko. All right, whatever. Um, <laughs> anyways, okay, I digress. Let me move some things out of the way. And then our very last item is this cute tin. And it has a Wheel of the Year sticker on it. Can you guys see it? Here we go how pretty it's kind of crooked my stickers on crooked <laughs> can you see that <laughs> they were like get the stickers on there um oh okay I was actually starting to peel it off I thought maybe it would move at first but uh, okay I'm gonna break it I'm gonna I mean rip it can you break a sticker you can rip it anyways we're just gonna go with the crooked sticker that's fine but listen when you get my herb jars, y'all, your sticker ain't gonna be crooked. I put on the stickers. Okay, that is it, guys. Maybe it'll say something about that, and then we're gonna move on with life. Like a chest of magical tools, this T10 is a space for you to keep your favorite teas and botanical brews. Place it in your apothecary for organized for or for <laughs> for organized and accessible magic. Very nice. <laughs> I might keep this actually up in my bedroom so I can have like some of my teas up in there with me while I'm working. Very nice. And then did we read this? It says ritual for amulet. While the wheel of the year follows a different set of sacred days than the Gregorian, Gregorian calendar, December 31st and the New Year's holds a certain type of magic over our collective conscious. As the ball drops, as the time changes, and the croc, croc, clock strikes midnight, many of us gather with friends or loved ones to ring in the New Year. New Year, however, is not just a single night. Combined with the magic of the winter solstice, the return of the light, and Yule, the end of December, and the beginning of January carries with it a potential for new beginnings. For this ritual, which, which will... We will be connecting with the energy of the season to practice an intention setting and divination ritual of the new year. To begin your new year ritual, first prepare your ritual space. For this ritual, we have included the six amulets. What? From this box, from this boxes of this year, from the boxes of this year, the Eye of Ra. Did I, did I get these? What? For this ritual, we have included the six amulets from the boxes of this year. I, I should have gotten some of these. I don't remember when I started with Tamed Wild. Maybe I missed some of these. So the amulets were the Eye of Ra, Bridget's Cross, the Bow of Artemis, Luz's Shield, Persephone's Moon, and Odin's Raven. Build a seven directions altar with the amulets. Odin's Raven, with its connection to air, can be placed in the east. Bridget's crossed with her connection to fire and the flame can be placed in the south. The eye of Ra with its connection to the sun can be placed in the west. The home of emotion and where the sun sets. Lou's shield because of his connection to the earth can be placed in the north. In the center of the ritual space, you can add Persephone's moon to, the sim to symbolize the below and the above and the boat of Artemis to symbolize the center. Honestly... Um, I think I might create a charm uh, bracelet. Where, where the fuck did I put my amulet? There it is. Um, okay, so on the back it says, if you do not have all the amulets, connect with each of the elements and the directions using items from your personal magical collection, feathers, stones, crystals, and herbs. Place a favorite teacup or drinking vessel in the center of the amulets and prepare your loose tea, loose leaf tea. See tea leaf reading card. Burn the blue sage to clean the space as you as your 
Okay, sometimes things are printed improperly and then I read it and it sounds all wrong. Okay, as you prepare your ritual calling upon your protective and guiding spirits, then affirm out loud your intention for your ritual. As you sip your tea, imagine what the year ahead has in store for you. Set your intentions clearly and concisely with as much spec... <laughs> Why do you guys give me words that I can't... Spec... <laughs> Specificity, 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 specificity. As you can call forward. What does your year look like in 2022? How does it feel? What are you manifesting? Then ask a question of the tea. As you practice your tea leaf reading, what some I'm getting stuff in my nose. What symbols arrive and what messages are brought to you from the buggy? buggy. <laughs> I can't fucking talk <laughs> from the beyond. Oh my Lord. Spend some time journaling around these messages and keep your writings nearby, either in your journal or on your altar as the new year unfolds. Close out your ritual. Then I'm going to start yawning <sighs> by thanking your guides and spirits and ancestors for their presence. Return the natural remnants to the earth and carry this new energy and inspiration into your year ahead. So mode it be. Very nice. I'm excited about that. I actually have been speaking to a bunch of my really great friends about what I want for the new year. Like, I'm happy that my, my overtime at work is ending like right at the new year or right before the new year because I'm, I'm feeling the need for a shift in my life and to um, really start working towards the things that I want to manifest for 2022. And um, like, I, I, I feel like things are going in the right direction and I can't wait to get started. And hopefully you guys will be a, whoa, a, a part of my, of my 2022 and moving forward. So on that note, thanks guys for hanging out with me for this video. I'd love to hear what you think of this box. What's your favorite item? Um, I don't know, like the crystal tea infuser balls situation is really great. Um, I like the cute little sticker on here, even if it's, um, if, even if it's crooked. <laughs> um, I'm excited to use this cold and blue tea and do this little ritual meditation thingamabob. So, and like I said, this, this box is extremely affordable and it usually does have really cute little simple items in it for you to use with your practice. So, and I think I'm going to go on their website and see, figure out what amulets I've missed and see if I can get them. Um, I need to look through my things and see what I already have, but again, everything's kind of packed away, so I'm going to have to go through all my stuff. But that is the plan coming up here pretty soon, so if you guys wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up for this video, it really helps out my channel. Leave me a comment below what your favorite item is. I'm going to say that this is my favorite. And if you guys aren't a current subscriber, I would love if you'd hit that subscribe button in the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And until next time, guys, thanks. Have a great day. Bye.